Hi everyone. Welcome to today's Life Talks and I'm so happy to be here with my dear friend um Tin Alejo and she's really an amazing person. She is an accountant by profession but she is so passionate. She is so talented, she is so skilled. She's also uh, a singer. She's a music um she's just really uh, uh, she cooks really well. If you have to try her um adobo and all of those things But today we're just here to help you, to bless you, and to teach you how to register your business. Because and daming ayong businesses na grow, maraming lumalabas yan. And I don't want you to um, be lost. And I just want you to learn something. And I want you to um, learn if it's time to register. Magregister ka ba? Hindi ka magregister. Bakit? Because when you start a business, it's an ability to scale, to grow. And especially if you lost a job. Na walang ka ng chance to earn money and then nagkaroon ka ng new income and then you grow this, eh kung umaman ka, then you can give more to people, you can just share more and bless more. With that being said, let me introduce my friend, um, Christine Alejo. Hi, Tin! Hello, good evening! Ayan. Tin, um, <laughs> can you introduce yourself? Say something about yourself right now um, as, as people get to know you. Ah, okay. So, I'm a freelance uh, bookkeeper and accountant. So, I've been doing this for two years already. Before that, uh, nag-work po ako in various companies. Uh, I uh, I worked in corporate muna. And then, I started a side hustle. I started bookkeeping as a side hustle. Nung naka, when I had my second client, that was the time I decided to do to do to do it full time na yung freelance nice so nice uh now medyo hindi maganda ang business kasi yung affected din yung mga client ko so my boyfriend and I decided to make another side hustle <laughs> ito naman a double flakes naman katulad ng sinabi ni Jay Paul kanina double flakes so we're selling a double flakes uh chicken and pork to our friends So, yun, yun ang pinagkakaabala ko. During nice. <laughs> wow. Thanks, Tin. I'm really happy for you. And I just want to congratulate you kasi you did not let this um, stress, um, this situation defeat you. And maybe they're saying, yeah, eh, pwede ka naman um, mag-negosyo. Pero nga, ta, sabi mo, may mga clients ka na na nag shut down or nag pause or whatever and before we start before we really help people i just want you to share uh ano yung mundo mo no nag okay uh what happened to you oy stop tayo pause kasi ganito nangyari how were your first few months during quarantine or because of covid what happened to you um yung first yung first few months kasi parang reacting yeah, sorry <laughs> reactive reactive lang yung nangyari ah uh, mga parang hinihintay ko lang what will happen next kasi when when the ECQ started ah uh, tax season oh what filing filing ng lahat ng tax returns so sabi ko tapos parang five days di ba March 16 sa March 20 deadline ng filing ng bad returns So parang abangers kami po paano kaya mangyayari to sarado opisina sarado mga mga bangko so paano makakapagbayad yung mga kliyente na ganito So parang for the first few months the first month talagang parang waiting lang talaga ako reactive lang Kasi hindi ko rin alam kung paano kami gagalaw kasi nga lahat ng files lahat ng documents na lockdown din Okay So, paano kami kikilos? Eh, paano kayo mag-file ang ITR? Paano pa kung baga parang ang daming concerns hanggang sa na-extend, in-extend, in-extend. Pero we had to face that reality na marami na talagang hindi makakabangon and affected yung sum ng mga clients ko din. So, medyo natagalan bago ko na-accept yung fact na yun bago ko kumilos. So, parang late na, nitong May na kami nung nag-start na. We have to do something to augment whatever what was lost. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Kasi, so, that was 
that was the time Moon Teams was born. <laughs> so yun siya. So it started with uh, 11 orders ng Port Adobo Flake. Wow. Then, yeah, it all started 11. And every Saturday lang siya. Kasi nga, ay niisip lang namin, side hustle siya. So, ngayon, we're reaching, pagka naka-reach siya kami ng 35, hinihinto na namin. <laughs> Kasi, wow. Hindi na, kaya, hindi na kaya ng capacity dito sa bahay na magluto. Baga parang, ayaw rin naman namin masacrifice yung quality. So, pagka na, yes. makarating na kami ng 35 to 40, we close it na. So, and that's also when we decided na mag-add na kami ng isang delivery day pa. Dati kasi Saturday lang. Ngayon, Wednesday. So, slowly but surely. Tapos. And then, we hope it turns out well. Wow. Kasi, eh, nakaisang buwan na. Nang ganun lang. Nang ganun-ganun lang. Nang hindi mo lang namin naramdaman. Ha? Nakaisang buwan na. Parang ganun. Congrats, Dane. And congrats, congratulations, Edmond. I'm really happy for you. And ang ganda ng kwento mo kasi ang daming tao na naka-experience ngayon. Hindi lang ikaw. Maraming tao ngayon na ganyan ang pinagdadaanan. Um, hindi lang ako. Okay. Hindi lang ako nag-iisa. <laughs> Okay. So with that being said, we're going to really, whoever's going to watch or listen this, we're going to really help them in their business registration and hopefully scale from there and really build a, a business if they think that is for them. Um, so ngayon tin, this, here's the scenario. When you go to Netflix, uh, sorry, Netflix, uh, Viber, Facebook, Instagram, all social medias, people are selling something. And that's not necessarily bad, pero may mga tao nakakatuwa kasi nag-grow talaga. Some some people tell, told me, uy, parang ganito na halos yung income namin. Uh, may mga tao na, uy, pwede to ah. And, and, and then they're thinking of growing. Um, kasi syempre ngayon, hindi pa tax kasi online selling, home reseller, or whatever. Okay. So, um, what can you say to those people na na nag-register ng business, nag-grow na yung business? Um, what should they do? How will they know if it's time to register? Okay. Um, hindi kasi siya formula na one size fits all. Eh. So sure. it really depends on how you measure yung growth ng business mo. And if it's really necessary na ba talaga? Kasi kayo mismo makakapag-decide yan. For instance, like what we were talking about a while ago, uh, there are opportunities missed din kasi kapag hindi ka register. Like for example, if you have corporate clients or if you have potential corporate clients na hindi mo makater kasi nga hindi ka fully registered. And then another thing is that Another thing that you should also consider is kung sustainable na ba siya. Mm-hmm. Kasi, you know, mm-hmm. registration also requires a big amount of money. Yeah. And sa ngayon, people cannot afford to spend more cash kasi nga hindi pa normal yung cycle ng pera ngayon. So okay. if you think that your, your, your business, yung takbo ng negosyo mo ngayon, is sustainable enough and uh, and might probably you know yung kinikita mo from let's say from your corporate job is also the same na nakikita mo ngayon dun sa 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 home business mo ngayon then probably it's the time it's probably the right time for you to register as long as okay. as long as nakikita mo na sustainable na siya and you have this pattern in mind na yung growth process niya, then probably you should register na rin. Kasi nagiging pa- source of income mo na siya. Paano masasabing, for example, syempre, uh, mahirap siya explain, but siguro what is sustainable for you at how much or ilang percent yung growth para, uy, okay na to, pwede tong pagkakitaan talaga. May future ako dito. Uh, okay. How would you know if it's sustainable? Like what I said, hindi siya one, hindi siya one formula fits all. Eh. 
talaga. Mm-hmm. Kasi kung halimbawa, sustino, nagninegosyo ka para mabuhay eh. Naghahanap buhay yes. ka para, di ba? So kung halimbawa, yung hanap buhay mo, uh, can sustain also the needs, yung needs mo personally and your family. I think for me, that's one factor eh. Sustainable na talaga siya. Mm-hmm. And you really need to um, to analyze your data din talaga. Eh. Nice. <laughs> it's a, kasi di ba, it's not that I'm an accountant or whatever. Kasi parang simple lang yan. Magkano yung, tinu, magkano yung pinuhunan mo? Magkano yung benta mo? Magkano yung tinubo mo? Yes. Di ba? Yung bang tubo mo na yun is ah, uh, sapat ng bayad dun sa pinagpaguran mo, dun sa produkto mo na yon Yes. Yun. You also have to consider that eh. Uh, and for me, kung baga parang depende talaga sa needs eh. Yung halimbawa, nag-start, halimbawa ito, nag-start ka nitong side hustle mo or nag-start ka ng home business mo to augment. Diba? To augment lang. Pero mm-hmm. dun ba sa performance ng business mo, were you able to exceed yung requirement yes. na augmentation lang? Yes. Alam mo, no? So you also, you cannot, we cannot really say, uh, ah, kapag ka 50% of my of my sales goes to is already yung gross profit ko na, hindi eh. Kasi, paano po ang sales mo isang libo lang? Oh, okay, okay. Gets. Diba? So hindi mo talaga siya masasabi na gano'n. Hindi siya, hindi siya, one formula does not fit to everybody. So, All right. You read, it's only you who could decide. And the only thing that, and one thing that could help you decide on it is kung, na, kung paano mo siya nakikita ang nag-grow. Mm. Diba? So, yun. Galing. Galing. Thank you, Tin. So, for example, what do you suggest if, for example, I, I, I remember na online business or new business because of COVID or whatever, may hobby. Okay naman, may income. But I don't see myself doing it for the next 10, 20 years or I'm not that passionate about it. I'm not willing to lose sleep about it. What do you suggest? Should this person register? Pa manage sa iba? Or, or what do you think? Um, for me, wag muna. <laughs> Direct sa wag muna. I'd, I'd, I'd be honest about it. Kasi um, yung growth kasi ng business would also depend on how committed you are. Mm-hmm. So if you're going to register it, it also costs money. Yes. Sayang naman kung hindi siya mag-grow. Tapos kung maga parang uh, on the sideline lang naman siya. Diba? So, huwag muna, baka hindi pa ready. And baka mapasama rin kasi when you register, it also comes with responsibilities. Filing, mm-hmm. payment, renewal, yes. stuff like that. Na kapag ka register mo, pero hindi ka pa naman pala ready, you might end up paying more than what you should be paying. Diba? Mapipenalty ka fa- so, It's funny diba? din, no? Kasi parang yung registration or business, it's, it's, it's like a relationship. Para siyang commitment. <laughs> na kailangan ready ka to commit before you do anything. Okay. Noted okay. for for those who are um, new to business or not, don't know yet what to do, it's you should be committed. Dapat ready kang tumaya. Uh, okay. So, the situation is this. I am um I realize for example, I have an online business um, I realized, okay, um, I want to do this for a long time. I want to invest in it. Tataya ako. Um, this can be my new income stream. And I want to register it. I, I want to see a future dito. Basically, parang papakasala mo na yung negosyo mo. Uh, what are the first things or what should uh, this entrepreneur do? All right. First, How do you register? Yeah. You need to decide what kind of business formation. Halimbawa, kung sole prop ka ba, mag ka lang, sole proprietorship, or kung magko-corporation ka ba, or magpa-partnership ka ba, or yung tinatawag nilang one-person corporation, it depends on kung ano ba yung nakikimo. Kasi ako, personally, pinakamadali, sole proprietorship. Kaya lang, 
uh, yung pinakamabilis i-register kasi sa GTI lang yun. And plus, mag-isa ka lang. Kaya lang, ang disadvantage, ang disadvantage, ang disadvantage kasi nun, um, yung risk, halimbawa, in case na magkaroon ng pagkalugi, mm-hmm. yung personal assets mo, aside from the business assets, pwede nga habulin. Pwede kang habulin ng mga debtors mo o ng mga, mga, mga creditors mo. Unlike kapag ka-corporation, pwede ka lang abulin hanggang dun sa assets ng business mo. Nyo. Mm. So, okay. so, you need to decide on that. Kung nakapag-decide ka na, depende rin kung saan ka mag-register. Kung sole prop ka, kung sole proprietorship ka, you register with DTI. Mm-hmm. If you're a corporation or a partnership, you register with SEC. Okay. Alright. Pero, uh, business name pa lang yung i-register mo doon. So, hindi natatapos sa DTI, hindi natatapos sa SEC ang registration. Mm-hmm. So, you need to register with the sa munisipyo to get your business permit. And then, you also need to register with the DIR. Okay. So ngayon, medyo mainit na usapan to si DIR ngayon. <laughs> Kasi naglabas siya ng memo. Nito lang, June. Uh, sinasabi niya na lahat ng online sellers or lahat ng gumagamit ng online platforms mag-register until yeah. July 31 without penalty. So ngayon, nagagalit ang mga tao. <laughs> Why? Kasi nga, di ba, everyone reverted to online selling. Yes. Di ba? Pero, to be fair with the Bureau, <laughs> matagal ng policy yun. Mm-hmm. 2013 pa, uh, matagal na yun na. Nireiterate lang na. Nireiterate lang na yun. Kasi nga, siguro napansin niya, almost everybody resorted into online selling. Okay. So, yun, nire Tapos ngayon, there's an also another way to ease up your registration kay DIR. Dati kasi, mm-hmm. Uh, you need to get your DTI or your SEP registration plus your business permit to be able to register kay DIR. Ngayon, tinanggal na niya yung business permit registration mm-hmm. sa requirements. So, ang kailangan mo na lang is mag- re- ang kailangan mo na lang to register is yung uh, DTI certificate of registration or your SEP certificate of registration. And then you could go directly to DIR to register with them. Mm-hmm. Pero, again, that does not mean, <laughs> dami no? That does not mean na hindi ka na magre-register sa munisipyo kung saan ka mag operate Okay. Kailangan mo pa rin kumuha ng business permit. Malinaw tayo doon ha. <laughs> Kasi maraming nagkaroon ng idea na Register na kami DTI. Tapos na ako. No. <laughs> sa Facebook na. Pinapost no. sa Facebook. <laughs> Hindi pa po. Meron pa pong second and third process which you really need to comply. Kasi mm-hmm. po, baka po kayo ma-penalize kapag hindi rin kayo nag-register dun sa mga subsequent registration. So, Alright. So, okay. So, nag-DTI sila or SEC. Then what next? DTI and SEC. After noon, they could go directly to DTI. Kung baka parang pwede na siyang simultaneous eh. Mm-hmm. Dati kasi, DTI or SEC, then Municipio, and then DIR. Kailangan magkakasunod okay. yun. Ngayon, after mo mag-register kay DTI or kay SEC, pwede ka nang simultaneously mag-register sa Municipio tsaka kay DIR. Kasi tinanggal mm-hmm. na kay DIR yung business permit. Okay. So, ganun siya. Galing. Oh, before we move forward, um, we're gonna go dive. We're gonna dive deeper into that. Um, kasi marami pa rin tanong dyan. Uh, si Kim, Kim De La Cruz, is asking, Ate Tin, may nagtatanong po, paano po pag one-man corporation, pwede po ba yun? Yes. Para hindi po habulin niyo yung personal assets mo. And maybe can you describe the pros and cons of one-man corporations? Uh, one-person corporation kasi is para siyang marriage ng sole prop tsaka ng corporation. Okay. Okay. Real talk tayo. <laughs> may mga corporation na sabi nila lima ang may-ari pero ang totoo, isa lang. Mm-hmm. 
May mga nangyayari yan. Uh, so, para iwasan yung mga ganun, yung sa US may ganun eh, inadopt natin dito. So, one man, one person corporation, yes, isa lang siya. It has the characteristics of a corporation. Mm-hmm. Uh, siya lang yung stockholder. Mm-hmm. Pero mag-isa lang siya. Unlike dun sa regular na domestic corporations na kailangan ng limang tao para ma-incorporate. What makes yeah. it different from a sole proprietorship? Since one person corporation siya, ang taxability niya is that of a corporation. Mm. Ibig sabihin, si one person corp- si sole prop kasi, ang dami niyang advantages para makapag-save on taxes. Binibigyan yes. ng privilege ng gobyerno ang mga sole proprietors yung mga, nag, mga, mga maliliit na negosyante na mag-start ng negosyo at makatipid sa taxes. Pero with one person corporation, yes, mag-isa ka lang. Have the characteristics. Mag-isa ka lang para kang sole prop. Pero ang taxation mo is that of a corporation which is 30% of your net income. Or yun yung regular rate. So 30% of your net income. So hindi mo... One person ka, pero hindi mo ma enjoy yung tax savings or yung mga privileges na binibigay ng gobyerno sa mga uh, sole proprietors. I so, see. Yeah. Wow. Thank you for that. So, um, sino ang taong bagay mag-one person corporation? Yung mga taong ayaw mag-take ng risk. <laughs> no, seriously. Yun yan. Kasi th- th- those are... One, per, one reason kung bakit ayaw nila na mag-register as a sole prop. Kasi katulad nga nung risk na, yung disadvantage na nasabi ko kanina. When the business goes bad, yeah. the creditors can go after the personal assets of a sole proprietor. Okay. Which cannot happen sa one-person corporation. Kasi nga, yung right. ident- yung substance niya is that of a corporation kahit na mag-isa lang siya. Yung asset, kung halimbawa magkaroon ng problema doon sa business, ang hahabunin lang is yung asset ng business. Hanggang okay. doon pa. Limited liability. Nice. So, yun. Wow. Galing. Galing. <laughs> exciting, exciting days ahead. Um, Alright. So, let's go back to, um, we answer that one person corporation. So, nag-register now sa SEC and, or DTI. What ano ba ang part na munis uh, munisipyo or municipal registration ano ba siya? Uh, ano yun ni? Eh? Take your permit to operate. Eh. <laughs> Kasi mm-hmm. SEC and DTI you're just registering the name, but you're mm-hmm. not actually allowed yet to operate. Mm-hmm. So basically, you need that para mo kapag start ka. Mm-hmm. So, well, that's uh, probably the simplest term that you could, you know, yun, kailangan mo siya eh. Kaya nga siya parang permit to operate. Mm-hmm. Kasi, after all, dun ka, sa, dun ka sa area na yun eh, kung saan ka mag, dun ka, kung halimbawa, kung sa Pasig ka mag-inegosyo. Kailangan mo manghingi ng permiso kay Pasig na, hello po, Mr. Mayor, pwede po ba nga mag, mag-operate? Yun yun. Yun yung purpose mm-hmm. Kailangan alam niya kasi sila rin, they have this uh, income from the businesses. Yes. Kapag, kasi syempre, nakikinabang ka din dun sa area na yun, kung saan ka nag-ooperate. Yes. At uh, if not for example, kung halimbawa, if not for the roads na pinagawa nila or whatsoever, nakikinabang ka dun. So dapat meron ka rin share. Dun sa binabayaran. Dun, share, dun sa binabayaran nila. Parang ganun. Okay. So, anong difference ng munisipyo, uh, municipal registration, and then the barangay registration? Prerequisite si barangay. So, parang paliit, palaki na palaki. Alright. So, okay. Parang, ganun na siya. Okay. So, parang ngayon, um, sinabihan kami kailangan daw namin magpa... Um, testing for our employees. So, punta lang daw kami sa Marikina... Uh, Marikina Health Center. So, so yun, para ma-rapid test sila. So, that's, I think, um, a benefit of what you're paying for in your taxes. Ito lang nasa Marikina kami. So, we are, we know that our, our corporate tax 
taxes are put into good use. This is not political in any way, but yeah, I mean, as a... You know. Like, like, sabi ko nga, when we're talking about business registration, ta- uh, tax compliance, uh, let's set aside first our political views kasi mahirap intindihin yung necessity bakit natin kailangan magbayad kung ang makikita mo is corruption or whatever yes. negativity, hindi mo siya may intindihan kung bakit. Galing. Nice. Alright, uh, Christine, um, may question dito si J.R. Anzano. Um, he's asking, common problem in registration sa mayor permit ay occupancy permit mm-hmm. ng place. Meron bang other options na pwedeng gawin? Parang wala. <laughs> Parang wala. Requirement talaga siya eh. If you're renting, dapat yung place na pinagre-rentahan mo has an occupancy permit. So it would be easier. So kumbaga, kumbaga syempre kung ano yung mas malaki, yung mas maliit, tapos yung house yung mas maliit, dapat yung mas malaki, occupant, uh, compliant siya. Parang ganun. Uh, pero when it comes to occupancy permit, parang wala eh. Kasi requirement talaga siya. So, right. it really depends dun sa evaluation ng mga city assessors and city engineers if the location, your your desired location is good for occupancy talaga. All right. So, for example, um, just based on my experience, kunyari, uh, sa consulting business, any office area pwede. Kahit residential office, pwede siyang gamitin. But when we started Alpha Logistics, we had to um, look for a place na so Marikina government does not allow anywhere. Kailangan industrial zone, tapos ganito yeah. siya. Is that, is that it? Tama ba yung... Yeah. Ano, ano? Depende rin kasi siya. For example, you're in for example, I had this experience where in trading siya. Pero hindi naiintindihan, hindi naiintindihan at first na yung trading niya, sorry, yung trading niya is, uh, kumbaga parang buy and sell lang. So wala siyang hawak na inventory. So yung mm-hmm. location niya, yung nire-register niyang location is a residential area. Mm-hmm. So noong una, ayaw pumayag nung, okay. nung munisipyo. So binigyan ang nagbibigay ng alternative is yung munisipyo kung paano ka magkakaroon ng permit. Halimbawa, mm-hmm. if your kapitbahay will sign na parang they oh sige okay lang, we allow this something like that parang meron silang uh, waiver mm-hmm. na they would allow you to operate. And then that would be an alternative. Pero like what I've said, case to case scenario sa ang nagbibigay ng options para din sa occupancy permit will be the city assessor's office. Yes. Kung saan ka nag-register. So, it, really de- it really depends kung ano yung alternative na ibibigay nila. Right. Kasi kami pinayagan ganun, pero for office use only, bawal mag-garahe. And also, the consulting business, sabi, sige, pwede kayo mag-condo, pero you need uh, 20 signatures para payagan kayo. So we had to do it and all of those okay. things. Kasi parang ang ang there was uh dito yung nakapagsabi sa akin dito. A friend from the municipio is I actually asked that about it before. Sabi niya, para mo kasi na-violate yung privacy ng mga residente. All right. So, okay, that makes more ba, sense. Oo, di ba? Ah uh, is nasa residential ka eh. Tapos mag-o-operate yes. ng business sa residential. Yes. Ah. All right. Okay. Sounds great. So, now we will just, um, I know not, before we move forward, I have a, lo- a lot of amazing questions for you. Pero, itong next question ko, just before, so that we can move forward from yung ganito mga uh, um, details on the registration. Maybe not all of them are your expertise, pero maybe you can like touch on ano ba importance ng Food and safety, fire, um, sanitary, go, yung mga, yung mga all other permits. Wa, bakit ang daming permits and why are they important at bakit natin kilangan siyang gawin? So, yun. It's for your own good. 
yun. I'm, I'm thinking of the simplest way para i-explain siya. But it's for your own good. Okay. Na, in the event na may mangyari, <clears throat> sorry, wag naman sana, hindi mo pwedeng sabihin na, na, ah, hindi nila pwedeng iba to sa'yo na nagpabaya ka, or, hmm. nagkalat ka, or, hindi ka nasa standard. Kasi, excuse me, I have this. All right. Diba? It's for your own good. It's for your protection. And at the same time, it it allows you to gain trust and confidence from your customers na, hey, we're safe. This is safe. Galing. Ganon. Galing. Kasi we could go on a lot of legalities about it. Bakit kailangan ng ganito? Bakit kailangan ng ganyan? Aside from, yeah, sige, sabihin na lahat yan, merong, merong fees na kaakibat doon and kumikita yung mm-hmm. gobyerno for that. Pero, at the end of the day, it's it's still for your own good. Kasi okay. if not, kung hindi ka rin magko-comply, makakapag-business ka ba? Yes. Yeah. Yan Galing. Thank you. So all of them are important kahit nakakatamad, nakakaasar. Sabi ko nga, eh, di ba? Commitment talaga sa <laughs> <laughs> Kung yung love life mo, kinukommitan mo, pati negosyo mo, dapat may commitment ka. Hindi pwedeng may shortcuts. Yeah. Basically, I get that's what I think I'm getting from you. Kung yung girlfriend mo ay mong lokohen or whatever, ay mong may side chicks ka or pandaraya, mula kang dini-DM, um, that's, I guess, what you should also do in business. You should be committed, stay true, and and stay honest as possible. Especially if you're, you know, if you believe in God, uh, I believe you should really do business the right way and the best way. Um, yeah. Then, I know marami kang sagot dyan, but before that, um, <laughs> before those belief stuff, and I ask you, oh, so Miguel Salapantan, thank you, bro. Yeah, this is really a great topic. We want to help a lot of um, entrepreneurs or mm-hmm. aspiring entrepreneurs. So, then, um, Okay, maybe I'm not yet the richest person. I am online selling or I'm passionate about something. I do whatever. Whatever you're doing, you're earning from it. Side hustle na pwede na maging main hustle. Um, but, I'm not, but, but some people tell me, Jay, uh, Jay Paul, hindi naman ako kumikita ng millions. Kailangan ako ba i-register yan? Why should I register? Na hindi pa ako mayaman. Mag-register lang ako pag mayaman na and all of those things. What is your answer? And then after your answer, what should they now do? Ah, paano ba? Ang hirap. <laughs> Ang hirap niya explain. Kasi... We have we have time. May 30 minutes pa tayo. Hindi. Ito lang yun eh. Kasi... Ang... Um, paano ba? Nag-iisip ako ng words eh. <laughs> Nag-iisip ako ng words na ano eh. Yung simplest way to explain it. Doing business kasi, you were given the right to do business. It also comes mm-hmm. with responsibility. Mm-hmm. Spider-Man, no? Right? Hindi. I mean, not just kay Spider-Man, but in everything else, di ba? <laughs> uh, hindi kasi pwedeng basihan mo lang yung pinikita mo or ano. E di kung... Paano naman yung mga empleyado na walang choice kung di magbayad ng tax? Yes. Uh, di ba? Kasi, eh, sabi ko, it's a matter of fairness eh. Mm-hmm. Di ba? And for me, you give what is due to the government kasi hindi ka makakapag-negosyo kung wala yung mga, kung, kung ano man yung pinagawa nila. For example, mag-transport ka ng goods from one point to another. Yeah. You cannot easily transport goods without the roads. Uh-huh. And you cannot do business without those roads. Mm-hmm. So, sabihin na natin na ang kinikita mo ay 10,000 lang or 5,000 lang. But regardless, may share ka dun sa gamit ng road na yun. Mm-hmm. You have to pay your share dun sa use ng road na yun. Okay. Alright. As simple as Huwag parang equity, inequality. Doon papasok lahat yun eh. Yeah. And then, uh, bakit mo kailangan mag-register? Kasi, 
Kung yun yung million na yung kinikita mo, ah, uh, ano na siya eh? It's a question of, ano na, ah, uh, integrity in doing business. For me, ah, that, yeah. that, uh, that's a question of integrity na yun. Kung baga parang, you're doing what's right, even no, even if no one is looking at it. Oo oh, yes. nga, sige, sige na natin na, hindi ka nang sisita ng gobyerno or whatsoever, eh, paano ko nang magsumbong sa'yo? Pwede yun. Ito po si, ano, si company na ito hindi nagbibigay ng resibo. Pwede wow. nangyari yun. Pwede yun. At nangyayari yun. Na pinangan, bawa, papadala ka ni BIR na resibo kasi hindi ka, nireport ka dahil hindi ka nakarehistro or hindi ka nagbibigay ng resibo. Pwede yun. Wala kang protection. So, kung baga, parang, Your business registration, it also serves for your own good. Na hindi ka yes. lang kay by night. It gives you really? integrity. And then, yun nga, sabi ko nga, when you're doing business, you're not just doing business for the sake of money. You're building relationships. You're building trust. You're building confidence dun sa mga tao na nakakatransact mo. And if you have, yes. And if it's not documented, it's not done. Okay. Yun. So yun. So so it, it's documented it's really important. So now talk about how can being a registered proper tax paying business maayos kang negosyo all your back end things are met your compliance. Uh, compliance for those who are watching or listening compliance are the government requirements etc cetera, etc. Cetera. Um, how can this help your business scale up to grow to move forward to whatever's next? Uh, well, yun nga, katulad nung na-mention ko kanina, it gives them trust and confidence na hindi ka lang, kumbaga, hindi ka fly by night. So, the more that they know what your capabilities are and what your, uh, what your company is capable of doing and then what you are allowed to do, papasukin at papasukin yun eh. Mm-hmm. ng businesses, papasukin na papasukin yun ng potential clients mo. Um, at nakalimutan ko yung this is what I usually say kapag ka ano yun. Yung the cost of compliance is cheaper than fines and penalties. Okay. Really nice. So, so I, re- I want to repeat, the cost of compliance cost is of cheaper compliance cheaper than fines and penalties. Wow, that's really gold. Really, <laughs> golden message. It's really wonderful. <laughs> thank you, thank you, thank you. Yeah, and it's not just applicable to DIR, but it's also applicable to mm. FTC, to uh, municipio, to SSS, to PhilHealth, to PagEasing. So, instead na ibayad mo siya sa fines and penalties, ibayad mo na lang siya ng tama. Alright. Ibayad mo na lang siya ng tama. Ganun na lang. Wow. So with that, I, sabi mo, if I lang tama. And with this, I wanna jump again or go from there. You said you're going ng tama. You're you're a Catholic. You're uh, you're serving God, and you're an accountant. And you have a duty uh, to the to the country as an accountant. And you have a duty to your clients as as it's your business. What can you say, I think you know where I'm going, to um, <laughs> clients, potential clients, na who wants to make magic in their accounting, their balance sheets, all of those things. And yeah, please, please answer. That is a very important thing we need to discuss. Kasi pagka ganyan, nag-disengage ako. Ano ba? Hindi. Yes, actually, there was a time na may potential client sana I disengaged. Hindi hindi ko na siya pinaabot sa ganun. Pero yun nga eh, it's a matter of integrity in doing business na talaga eh. Even if no no one is seeing, you know what's right or wrong. And Yes. Um... Hindi lang naman hindi naman sarili mo, hindi lang naman sarili mo yung ano ba? Nilolo ko mo lang yung sarili mo kung ganoon yung gagawin mo. That's right. 
So, in last week, mo rin naman maluloko ang jokes ko ang tama at ngayon na ginawa ko or hindi. Wow. Thank you for sharing that. <laughs> It's very, very simple but ang hirap gawin. <laughs> Uh, but maybe you can also um, share there are also legal and morally correct ways of managing your taxes. Maybe you, you can share that. Um, kasi baka ah, okay. na, ah, mahirap lang lahat. Um, I know you've taught me because uh, for those who don't know, just to be fully transparent, <laughs> Christine Alejo is the accountant of um, Alpha Logistics. So, yun lang. So, we always talk. So, just, just, just to be transparent to those who are receiving this message. Yun. So, yeah. si Tin very, for those who are watching, Tin is very strict on us. Kaya pagod na pagod din ako. Pen namin, dami niya pinapahanda. And because she wants us to be proper entrepreneurs. So, Tin, sorry. Uh, yeah, please share um, good ways to do um, tax management the right way, the Catholic, the Christian way, ethical uh, way. Yeah. Well, it- yung legal terms naman, meron naman talagang ways para makatilid sa taxes na hindi ka nagdadaya. There's this tax avoidance. And, marab- and I don't want to uh, point it out isa-isa, pero napakaraming uh, ways ng tax avoidance na pwedeng magamit ng isang kumpanya o ng isang negosyante para makatilid sa taxes. Okay? All right. And then there's this thing called uh, BNBE or Barangay Micro Business Enterprise na it gives privilege dun sa mga registered BNBEs na they could they could give salaries ng they are exempted sa minimum wage rate. Kasi kung hindi mm. talaga kaya na but micro business ka nga eh. And then yes. you are exempted from um, income tax. So kumbaga Napakaraming paraan ng gobyerno na binibigay din ng gobyerno para sa mga negosyante, corporation tamaan or a uh, sole prop na pwede mong gamitin na hindi ka magre-refer to uh, fraud. <laughs> Wala akong nag-isip ako ng term yun, na hindi ka magre-refer to fraud. So napakarami. Right. You just have What to... What is fraud? Ah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, pang basta erroneous reporting, intentional erroneous reporting yun na lang. Uh, pero napakaraming paraan para para makatitid sa tax na hindi ka gumagawa ng mali or hindi That's ka right. hindi ka nagre-report ng mali. Kasi that is still stealing. Or stealing mm-hmm. from the government. <laughs> yeah. That's right. Wow. So you're stealing from the government, you're stealing from your uh, countrymen, You're, you're stealing from people. Galing. Galing. I actually, um, I'm also learning a lot. Uh, for Just in case you don't know, then ako mismo para, kasi syempre, we have you eh. Nasabi mo lang naman sa amin kung tama o mali eh. Pero, um, with, with this, it's really helping me. Okay, this is what we should do. Um, kasi for me, honestly, as an entrepreneur, ang inisip ko lagi, sales. Sales, produkto, happy ba yung client. These things, I don't really think about it unless you tell me, right? So you know, just really, um, it's I, I really highly appreciate it. Thank you. Jr. There's another um, question from Jr. Sabi niya, which one should you suggest for startup businesses when it comes to taxes, VAT or non-VAT? That is a very common question, but please answer. Anong klaseng business? Ina ng tanong. Kasi, baka mamaya, yung business mo, di ko kasi alam kung ano yung business niya. Yeah. Uh, baka kasi yung business niya, talagang bat. May mga businesses kasi na diretso bat agad. Regardless ng sales niya or whatever. Pero, kung hindi ka naman pasok dun sa businesses na yun, push na bat ka. <laughs> okay. Kasi una-una, mas maliit. Pangalawa, kung na bat registered ka, mas may enjoy mo yung mga privileges, yung mga options para makatitig sa tax. So, that's one. Uh, una, makatitig ka, marami ka options. Uh, pangatlo, mas flexible din. 
kung nan bat ka mas okay na mag-shift kung halimbawa na kasi ganito yun uh, kung nan bat ka dapat ang sales mo or gross receipts mo is 3 million and below mm-hmm. but if you exceed 3 million you are required to register as a bat person mm-hmm. bat, uh, bat registered entity pero kasi mas madaling mag-shift from non-VAT to VAT kaysa yung mag-shift ka from VAT to non-VAT. Kasi di ba? Kasi VAT is 12%. Babalik ka ng 3%. Kailangan mong patunayan kay DIR na non-VAT ka talaga at hindi ka makakapagpalit ka agad kasi 3 years ang proving period nun. Wow. Yeah. So kung startup ka talaga and if your line of business does not fall in any of those but required registered needed to be registered talaga as but agad then go for nanbat galing thank you thank you so much <laughs> uh, wow uh, yeah so ang dami natin tutunan talagang para tayong accounting one on one one on one in like Parang 40 so minutes <laughs> oh my galing ang galing I don't know how you're doing it <laughs> um, but for those who are you know scared, natatakot because wala silang kakilala, baka kailangan nilang man, you know, they need to buy, pay a fixer, they just don't know who to talk to, where should they start, how should they start, and yeah. Um, well, the first thing they need to do is ask. Libre magtanong. <laughs> if they need assistance, uh, they could contact me. <laughs> No. Plugging. No. Go, please plug. <laughs> no. Uh, pero, yun nga, parang, hindi, like what you've said, hindi lahat kasi expertise ng mga tao eh. So, kung hindi may expertise yung, yung ganito, yung ganitong documentation, you, you might need to get someone who knows it. Kasi, baka, dumating din sa point na you're paying too much and you should you should only be paying this much. Yeah. Ano yun? So seek for help. Seek, seek for assistance. Yun na lang. Yun, yun na sa iba lang kong words. Kasi kung if you're not really familiar with it, uh, the best thing to do is to ask for help. To seek for assistance. Yeah, to add to that, um, here's a lot of, sometimes people ask me about registration. Sabi ko, ako pa tinanong nyo, hindi ako expert dyan. But um, also, I always tell people, you also need to check your municipality. Kasi, for example, I'm registered in Marikina. Ibang-iba sa, I'm not sure kung ano yung um, rules in Makati, etc., etc. Maybe, uh-huh. can you do a brief uh, explanation on the like the cities of Taguig, Makati, Pasig, QC, Marikina. I mean, I'm not sure if whatever you can answer, I'm sure people will appreciate. Um, kasi ang na-handle ko pa lang is more on renewals. So, yung mga new registrants talaga, medyo nahirapan kami nun. Kasi sa Pasig, uh, sobrang strict kasi talaga sila. When it comes to Pasig, hindi sila... Si Tito Vico nag- talaga eh, no? Oo. <laughs> that was before COVID. And, pero, ang maganda lang sa kanila, one-stop shop. I think that's also applicable with other cities like uh, Marikina. Marikina! The best. Yes, Marikina is also one-stop shop. So, yeah. kumbaga, parang lahat ng kailangan mo, doon ka lang sa isang building yung ikot. Yes. Mga based from I'm talking about ex, from experience here. Uh, sa Pasig kasi medyo one stop shop na lang din sila ngayon. Pero medyo strict talaga sila when it comes to securing permits before you could actually get yung business permit talaga to operate. Wow. Yeah. So, sa sa Quezon City Doon actually pinakamatagal ko na experience. I'm talking about experience here, ha? I'm not saying here, hindi sila maganda or whatsoever. Pero sila yung, sa kanila namin na experience yung pinakamatagal na process. Siguro din kasi yung volume ng registrant. Yes. Ano yung kita mo? Parang alas 8 nandun na kami. Alas 8 nandun na kami. Pagdating namin sa pila, yung 
yung nakuha namin, number 64 na kami. Wow. So, imagine. Grabe. Diba, parang 8 o'clock. Anong oras pa kami pupunta doon para mag-register? Talo so, pa niya MRT, no? Oo. Oh, <laughs> 8 o'clock, sakto 64. <laughs> so, yeah. yeah. Wow. I have one last question before you say a uh, closing message. Um, Tin, ito pinaka, or sorry, Christine, kahit pala. Because you are <laughs> online. Um, Christine, your tita or tita, tita Tess is here. She's watching. Uh, she loves you and supports you. Your I, I know, um, and your mom here, alam pong idol mo yung mga yan, so huwag kang kabahan. <laughs> kaino, kaino pa sila nandito? <laughs> <laughs> Kaya hindi ko sinasabi ba kabahan ka. Alright, so anyway. Um, okay. Um, there's the million dollar question. Should you take a loan to start a business? Kailangan mo mangutang para magnegosyo. <laughs> Ang hirap naman kasi niyan. Can I take, can I answer it personally? You're, it's your, you're the guest. Not me. Yeah. Personally, I, I would not recommend. Why? Kasi, if you're doing business, tapos natanggap mo na yung proceeds ng business mo. For example, you have your sales. Naturally, your first priority dun sa cash na hawak mo is to pay off your debt. Instead yeah. na napunta sa'yo. Diba? Kung mga parang Sayo naman yung pinapaguran mo kung ibang tao lang yung babayaran mo. Buti sana kung malaki yung returns ng business mo. Diba? But if not, if you're, if you're going to start a home business, baka yung tubo mo, mapunta lang sa pambabayad ng utang mo. That's right. Diba? Which is for me, sayang naman, pinagirapa mo, tapos sa iba mapupunta. Parang relasyon lang. <laughs> <laughs> so, pasok na naman tayo sa real life But yun, yun nga, yung parang it takes the priority, not yourself, yeah. but your debtors. Yeah. Yes. So, wow. if you're, if you're, if you have high returns, if you're, if you're, if your business is, uh, has a high returns, higher than the amount of the amortization or the loan that you have, then, Yes, go with it. Pero kung halimbawa magpapantay lang siya, uh, baka nagbabayad ka lang para mag, baka nagnegosyo ko lang para magbayad ng utang. Wow. So you also have to wait. <laughs> Mabigat ba? <laughs> but, Mabigat but true. Yeah, Needs so you be... also have to weigh if it's beneficial for you or not. Yes, it's an easy source of money. It's cheap. But when you're already working on it, baka doon mo mahirapan, doon mo maramdaman yung actual cost of debt mo. Wow. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> Galing. <laughs> Ang bigat ba? Sorry na. <laughs> no, no. I think it's really good. I think people should know it. And maybe, I mean, people can follow you or not, but at least they know. Uh, they know your point. They can really think about it. I, I believe a lot of people get into business Not without thinking severely, without <laughs> thinking things through, they're not asking. Um, they think madali lang tong side ng business, but really this is really a difficult side. But also there's a very big backbone of the business that people um, misunderstand and don't they don't really take care of. Yeah, I think uh, it really takes commitment when you're doing this. So. And ako, personally, if you're not investing your personal cash, it also speaks on how you are committed to it. Eh. So, nice. kung, baga, kung hindi mo kayang itaya yung sarili mong pera, why did you start business in the first place? Kaleng. Kung, That's kung baga, right. Parang, kung hindi ka mismo naniniwala na itong tinaya kong to na sarili kong pera, kikita to, babalik to. Parang yan. <laughs> galing 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 okay galing um, yeah thank you so much um, Christine Joy Alejo um, bef- 
how can people get you? How can they hire you? How can people connect with you? I'm sure they have a lot more questions, more specific questions. Uh, and then if they need a bookkeeper, accountant, or registration services, how can they get you? Um, they could visit my Facebook page, Christine Goyalejo. Um, siguro I'll just put the link na lang dun sa comment section para they could also contact me doon. So, yeah. Yeah. All right. Thanks, Tin. Um, if they, guys, if you want to get to know Tin, she's already taken. Lisa Love Life. But if you want to get to know Tin through <laughs> through business and um have her services, um, I'll, you can message me, send me a DM, and then I'll, I'll connect you to Christine. By the way, Tin, last message before we close. Something you want to say? A closing point, closing thought, closing anything before we go. Bilis. One hour na. <laughs> one hour na pala yun. <laughs> Ah, uh, ganun din siguro. I'd like, i-emphasize ko lang ulit. Una, the cost of compliance is cheaper than fines and penalties. Emphasize ko lang yun. <laughs> Kalimutan nyo na lahat na sinabi ko, wag lang yun. <laughs> and then, siguro yun nga, um, you cannot, uh, ano ba, you cannot separate your values din kasi when you're doing business and then yung whatever life that you have, yeah. magiging too fake ka. So, you have to be yung integrity mo when you're doing business and uh, it's really important uh, kasi sabi ko nga, hindi lang naman, hindi uh, Ilala ko mo lang ang sarili mo kung pinipake mo lahat. <laughs> so, kung baka hindi ka, hindi ka honest, diba? Ilala yeah. ko mo lang sarili mo. Nagnegosyo ko pa. <laughs> Parang ganun. Yes. Yes. Diba? So, um, sabi ko, at hindi lang naman sa maling paraan ka makakatikid. Maraming paraan. You just have to explore. You just have to ask kung pwede sa'yo o hindi. But, um uh, uh you you, sh- you should always consider yung honesty in doing the thing. Galing. That's right. Kasi hindi lang uh, hindi lang sa dinimo niloloko mo pala pati yung mga customers mo. Di ba? Kasi sabi ko when you're doing business, you're not just dealing with you're not just doing business monetarily. You're also building relationships. Galing. Wow. So, yeah. Super beautiful, super beautiful. Um, thanks, um, Christine Joy Alejo. We really um, are blessed by your wisdom, knowledge, and expertise. And I really hope that you have more clients, you serve more people. And I pray that God will bless you, God will prosper you. Not just that, even mountains, um, whatever God leads you, um, how it is, how it will grow into really a preferred comfort uh, food um brand na hindi lang siya adobo flakes and and yun. so um yes so go to Christine Joy Alejo or Montins M O N T I N E apostrophe S and so that's where she can get um, um you can talk to her so thank you so much everyone for watching next week um I am so excited for next week's business talks I'm having two friends and they're good friends I think they're best friends and they're both in the music business so it's not just parang kasi the thing is minsan naghahata ka ng tao kasi magkaibigan you're in the, the same thing but you can also succeed together even if you're two separate entities and really in music it's really hard to follow your passion so i'm having vanya castor and hannah de la rosa to next week uh, for business talks it's really really exciting so yeah thank you so much and christine i'm so grateful that you're our you are our alpha accountant and you're here <laughs> as our guest Thank you, Dan. Thank you, Dan. Thanks, Dan. Thanks, everyone. See you next week and God bless. And um, this week, I have a new show or new episodes. It's called Man on a Mission. It's really about um, men. The mission of men is to lead their family to heaven. It's all about manhood. Please watch and be blessed. God bless you. See you again. Bye. Thank you. Thank you.